Chapter Thirty Five. Baron Montes de Matijanich was a lion, but a lion not accounted for. Fashionable Paris, Paris of the turf and of the town, admired the ineffable waistcoats of this foreign gentleman, his spotless patent leather boots, his incomparable sticks, his much coveted horses, and the negro servants who rode the horses and who were entirely slaves and most consumedly thrashed. His fortune was well known. He had a credit account up to seven hundred thousand francs in the great banking house of Dutillet but he was always seen alone when he went to first nights he was in a stall he frequented no drawing-rooms he had never given his arm to a girl on the streets his name would not be coupled with that of any pretty woman of the world to pass his time he played whist at the jockey club the world was reduced to calumny or which it thought funnier to laughing at his peculiarities he went by the name of Combabus. Bichiou, Léon de Lora, Lousteau, Florine, Mademoiselle Héloïse Brisetou, and Nathan, supping one evening with the notorious Carabine, with a large party of lions and lionesses, had invented this name with an excessively burlesque explanation. Massol, as being on the Council of State, and Claude Vignon, erewhile professor of Greek, had related to the ignorant damsels the famous anecdote preserved in Rollin's ancient history concerning Combabus, that voluntary Abelard who was placed in charge of the wife of a king of Assyria, Persia, Bactria, Mesopotamia, and other geographical divisions peculiar to old Professor Du Bocage, who continued the work of Danville, the creator of the East of Antiquity this nickname which gave carabine's guests laughter for a quarter of an hour gave rise to a series of over-free jests to which the academy could not award the montillon prize but among which the name was taken up to rest thenceforth on the curly mane of the handsome baron called by josepha the splendid brazilian as one might say a splendid catozantha carabine the loveliest of her tribe whose delicate beauty and amusing wit had snatched the sceptre of the thirteenth arrondissement from the hands of mademoiselle turquet better known by the name of malaga mademoiselle seraphine Sinet, this was her real name was to du tillet the banker what josepha mirat was to the duc de rouville now, on the morning of the very day when Madame de Saint Esteve had prophesied success to Victorin, Carabine had said to Du Tillet at about seven o'clock, "If you want to be very nice, you will give me a dinner at the Rocher de Cancale and bring Cambabus. We want to know once for all whether he has a mistress. I bet that he has, and I should like to win." he is still at the hotel des princes i will call replied du tillet we will have some fun ask all the youngsters the youngster bichu the youngster lora in short all the clan at half-past seven that evening in the handsomest room of the restaurant where all europe has dined a splendid silver service was spread made on purpose for entertainments where vanity pays the bill in banknotes a flood of light fell in ripples on the chaste rims waiters whom a provincial might have taken for diplomatists but for their age stood solemnly as knowing themselves to be overpaid five guests had arrived and were waiting for nine more these were first and foremost bichu still flourishing in eighteen forty three the salt of every intellectual dish always supplied with fresh wit a phenomenon as rare in paris as virtue is leon de lora the greatest living painter of landscape and the sea who has this great advantage over all his rivals that he has never fallen below his first successes the courtesans could never dispense with these two kings of ready wit no supper no dinner was possible without them seraphine Sine, dit carabine as the mistress en titre of the amphitryon was one of the first to arrive and the brilliant lighting showed off her shoulders unrivalled in paris 
her throat as round as if turned in a lathe without a crease her saucy face and dress of satin brocade in two shades of blue trimmed with honiton lace enough to have fed a whole village for a month pretty jenny cadine not acting that evening came in a dress of incredible splendor her portrait is too well known to need any description a party is always a long champ of evening dress for these ladies each anxious to win the prize for her millionaire by thus announcing to her rivals this is the price i am worth a third woman evidently at the initial stage of her career gazed almost shamefaced at the luxury of her two established and wealthy companions simply dressed in white cashmere trimmed with blue her head had been dressed with real flowers by a coiffeur of the old-fashioned school whose awkward hands had unconsciously given the charm of ineptitude to her fair hair still unaccustomed to any finery she showed the timidity to use a hackneyed phrase inseparable from a first appearance she had come from valognes to find in paris some use for her distracting youthfulness her innocence that might have stirred the senses of a dying man and her beauty worthy to hold its own with any that normandy has ever supplied to the theatres of the capital the lines of that unblemished face were the ideal of angelic purity her milk-white skin reflected the light like a mirror the delicate pink in her cheeks might have been laid on with a brush she was called cydalise and as will be seen she was an important pawn in the game played by madame nourrisson to defeat madame marneffe your arm is not a match for your name my child said jenny cadine to whom carabine had introduced this masterpiece of sixteen having brought her with her and in fact cydalise displayed to public admiration a fine pair of arms smooth and satiny but red with healthy young blood what do you want for her said jenny cadine in an undertone to carabine a fortune what are you going to do with her well madame cambabus and what are you to get for such a job guess a service of plate i have three diamonds i am selling them a green monkey no a picture by raphael what maggot is that in your brain josepha makes me sick with her pictures said carabine i want some better than hers du tillet came with the brazilian the hero of the feast the duc de Rouville followed with josepha the singer wore a plain velvet gown but she had on a necklace worth a hundred and twenty thousand francs pearls hardly distinguishable from her skin like white camellia petals she had stuck one scarlet camellia in her black hair a patch the effect was dazzling and she had amused herself by putting eleven rows of pearls on each arm as she shook hands with jenny cadine the actress said lend me your mittens josepha unclasped them one by one and handed them to her friend on a plate there's style said carabine quite the duchess you have robbed the ocean to dress the nymph monsieur le duc she added turning to the little duc de Rouville. the actress took two of the bracelets she clasped the other twenty on the singer's beautiful arms which she kissed lousteau the literary cadger la palferine and malaga massol vauvinet and theodore gaillard a proprietor of one of the most important political newspapers completed the party the duc de rouville polite to everybody as a fine gentleman knows how to be greeted the comte de la palferine with the particular nod which while it does not imply either esteem or intimacy conveys to all the world we are of the same race the same blood equals and this greeting 
the shibboleth of the aristocracy was invented to be the despair of the upper citizen class carabine placed combabus on her left and the duc d'herouville on her right cydalise was next to the brazilian and beyond her was bichu malaga sat by the duke oysters appeared at seven o'clock at eight they were drinking iced punch every one is familiar with the bill of fare of such a banquet by nine o'clock they were talking as people talk after forty-two bottles of various wines drunk by fourteen persons dessert was on the table the odious dessert of the month of april of all the party the only one affected by the heady atmosphere was cydalise who was humming a tune none of the party with the exception of the poor country girl had lost their reason the drinkers and the women were the experienced elite of the society that sups their wits were bright their eyes glistened but with no loss of intelligence though the talk drifted into satire anecdote and gossip conversation hitherto confined to the inevitable circle of racing horses hammerings on the bourse the different occupations of the lions themselves and the scandals of the town showed a tendency to break up into intimate tete-a-tete -tete, the dialogues of two hearts and at this stage at a signal from carabine to leon de lora bichu la palferine and du tillet love came under discussion a doctor in good society never talks of medicine true nobles never speak of their ancestors men of genius do not discuss their works said josepha why should we talk business if i got the opera put off in order to dine here it was assuredly not to work so let us change the subject dear children but we are speaking of real love my beauty said malaga of the love that makes a man fling all to the dogs father mother wife children and retire to clichy talk away then don't know yer said the singer the slang words borrowed from the street arab and spoken by these women may be a poem on their lips helped by the expression of the eyes and face what do not i love you josepha said the duke in a low voice you perhaps may love me truly said she in his ear and she smiled but i do not love you in the way they describe with such love as makes the world dark in the absence of the man beloved you are delightful to me useful but not indispensable and if you were to throw me over to-morrow i could have three dukes for one is true love to be found in paris asked leon de lora men have not even time to make a fortune how can they give themselves over to true love which swamps a man as water melts sugar a man must be enormously rich to indulge in it for love annihilates him for instance like our brazilian friend over there as i said long ago extremes defeat themselves a true lover is like an eunuch women have ceased to exist for him he is mystical he is like the true christian an anchorite of the desert see our noble brazilian every one at table looked at henri montes de montejanus who was shy at finding every eye centred on him he has been feeding there for an hour without discovering any more than an ox at pasture that he is sitting next to i will not say in such company the loveliest but the freshest woman in all paris everything is fresh here even the fish it is what the house is famous for said carabine baron montes looked good-naturedly at the painter and said very good i drink to your very good health and bowing to leon de lora he lifted his glass of port wine and drank it with much dignity are you then truly in love asked malaga of her neighbor thus interpreting his toast the brazilian refilled his glass bowed to carabine and drank again to the lady's health then said the courtesan in such a droll tone that lora du tillet and bichu burst out laughing 
the brazilian sat like a bronze statue this impassibility provoked carabine she knew perfectly well that montes was devoted to madame marneffe but she had not expected this dogged fidelity this obstinate silence of conviction a woman is as often gauged by the attitude of her lover as a man is judged from the tone of his mistress the baron was proud of his attachment to valerie and of hers to him his smile had to these experienced connoisseurs a touch of irony he was really grand to look upon wine had not flushed him and his eyes with their peculiar lustre as of tarnished gold kept the secrets of his soul even carabine said to herself what a woman she must be how she has sealed up that heart he is a rock said bichu in an undertone imagining that the whole thing was a practical joke and never suspecting the importance to carabine of reducing this fortress while this conversation apparently so frivolous was going on at carabine's right the discussion of love was continued on her left between the duc d'herouville lousteau josepha jenny cadine and massal they were wondering whether such rare phenomena were the result of passion obstinacy or affection josepha bored to death by it all tried to change the subject you are talking of what you know nothing about is there a man among you who ever loved a woman a woman beneath him enough to squander his fortune and his children's to sacrifice his future and blight his past to risk going to the hulks for robbing the government to kill an uncle and a brother to let his eye be so effectually blinded that he did not even perceive that it was done to hinder his seeing the abyss into which as a crowning jest he was being driven du tillet has a cash-box under his left breast leon de lora has his wit bichu would laugh at himself for a fool if he loved any one but himself masson has a minister's portfolio in the place of a heart lousteau can have nothing but viscera since he could endure to be thrown over by madame de baudray monsieur le duc is too rich to prove his love by his ruin vauvinet is not in it i do not regard a bill-broker as one of the human race and you have never loved nor i nor jenny cadine nor malaga for my part i never but once even saw the phenomenon i have described it was and she turned to jenny cadine that poor baron hulot whom i am going to advertise for like a lost dog for i want to find him oh said carabine to herself and looking keenly at josepha then madame nourrisson has two pictures by raphael since josepha is playing my hand poor fellow said vauvinet he was a great man magnificent and what a figure what a style the heir of francis i what a volcano and how full of ingenious ways of getting money he must be looking for it now wherever he is and i make no doubt he extracts it even from the walls built of bones that you may see in the suburbs of paris near the city gates and all that said bichu for that little madame marneffe there is a precious hussy for you she is just going to marry my friend crevel said du tillet and she is madly in love with my friend steinbock leon de lora put in these three phrases were like so many pistol-shots fired point-blank at montes he turned white and the shock was so painful that he rose with difficulty you are a set of blackguards cried he you have no right to speak the name of an honest woman in the same breath with those fallen creatures above all not to make it a mark for your slander he was interrupted by unanimous bravos and applause bichu leon de lora vauvinet du tillet and masson set the example and there was a chorus hurrah for the emperor said bichu crown him crown him cried vauvinet three groans for such a good dog hurrah for brazil cried lousteau 
so my copper-coloured baron it is our valerie that you love and you are not disgusted said leon de lora his remark is not parliamentary but it is grand observed Masson. but my most delightful customer said du tillet you were recommended to me i am your banker your innocence reflects on my credit yes tell me you are a reasonable creature said the brazilian to the banker thanks on behalf of the company said bichu with a bow tell me the real facts montes went on heedless of bichu's interjection well then replied du tillet i have the honor to tell you that i am asked to the crevel wedding aha combabus holds a brief for madame marneffe said josepha rising solemnly she went round to montes with a tragic look patted him kindly on the head looked at him for a moment with comical admiration and nodded sagely hulot was the first instance of love through fire and water said she this is the second but it ought not to count as it comes from the tropics montes had dropped into his chair again when josepha gently touched his forehead and looked at du tillet as he said if i am the victim of a paris jest if you only wanted to get at my secret and he sent a flashing look round the table embracing all the guests in a flaming glance that blazed with the sun of brazil i beg of you as a favor to tell me so he went on in a tone of almost childlike entreaty but do not vilify the woman i love nay indeed said carabine in a low voice but if on the contrary you are shamefully betrayed cheated tricked by valerie if i should give you the proof in an hour in my own house what then i cannot tell you before all these iagos said the brazilian carabine understood him to say magos baboons well well say no more she replied smiling do not make yourself a laughing-stock for all the wittiest men in paris come to my house we will talk it over montes was crushed proofs he stammered consider only too many replied carabine and if the mere suspicion hits you so hard i fear for your reason is this creature obstinate i ask you he is worse than the late lamented king of holland i say lousteau bichu masson all the crew of you are you not invited to breakfast with madame marneffe the day after to-morrow said leon de lora ja said du tillet i have the honor of assuring you baron that if you had by any chance thought of marrying madame marneffe you are thrown out like a bill in parliament beaten by a black ball called crevel my friend my old comrade crevel has eighty thousand francs a year and you i suppose did not show such a good hand for if you had you i imagine would have been preferred montes listened with a half absent half smiling expression which struck them all with terror at this moment the head waiter came to whisper to carabine that a lady a relation of hers was in the drawing-room and wished to speak to her carabine rose and went out to find madame nourrisson decently veiled with black lace well child am i to go to your house has he taken the hook yes mother and the pistol is so fully loaded that my only fear is that it will burst said carabine End of chapter 3